Do you know how to properly communicate with spirits? You know what to do if you go to a graveyard or a cemetery? Well, stick around because we're going to be talking about some of that. Hey everybody, welcome back to our channel. My name is Bella Luna. I am part of a trio of witches who call themselves the Bitchy Witchies. We do a podcast and we run this YouTube channel. So as part of our Samhain series for this month, today I'm going to be talking to you a little bit about spirit etiquette. Spiritual etiquette is essentially some do's and don'ts, so to speak, of how to conduct yourself when you are communing with spirits ancestors, whatnot. Now, what I'm going to go over is actually very, very generic, very 50,000 foot view. And that's because different cultures have somewhat differing beliefs on how things should be approached. So if your background is a culture that has very distinct ways to conduct yourself, um, obviously, go with what your culture defines. Same thing with, if you're with specific traditions, uh, you wanna go with that. So what I'm giving you is, is just a generic overview. So the first thing is the most obvious, the most basic, and as with anybody that you communicate with, we're talking about just basic common courtesy, respect, and politeness. It's no different than when you are meeting somebody for the first time or meeting up with somebody that you know. You're not normally going to be rude or unpolite or disrespectful. The next thing is, uh, again, kind of basic etiquette for anything, which is your general greetings. When you are first meeting with somebody, you want to greet them. And if you're leaving, you want to let them know that you're leaving. You don't just want to walk out. So, uh, so common courtesy is to let them know when your time with them is done and it is time for them to depart or you to depart. A quick note on being courteous. Courteous does not equate to being subservient. So we are not talking about a worship type of relationship. Now, if you're dealing with other entities that if for some reason you do choose to worship, that's a different subject. So when we're talking about dealing with entities and spirits, ancestors, that you are respecting and honoring but not worshiping, just keep that in mind. And the reason why I say that is because it's okay to be assertive and confident and clear in what you want. Having said that, you also don't want to come across like you are bossing them around because that's just simply disrespectful. Another side note on the basic greetings is that some trains of thought say that when you are dealing with higher level beings like angels or deities, daemons, uh, that you shouldn't necessarily speak to them first. Not everybody necessarily agrees with that, but I just thought I'd share that because there are some who do. So in other words, you wait for them to speak to you. So that is how some people view communication with higher beings, is that you simply allow them to speak first. You acknowledge their presence, you greet them, uh, but you let them speak first. The other thing to remember is don't be afraid. They can sense, you know, much like animals can sense when we have fear, um, spirits, entities, they can tell when we're afraid. For some, they don't appreciate that. For others, they, they may take advantage of that. So be confident. If you are fearful, then you're not ready to talk to them. So get yourself into a place where you have 
confident, you're not fearful, you're open to the experience, and you're expectful of the experience. If you are approaching a spirit or ancestor because you seek to ask their assistance somehow, uh, be it with spell work or, or what have you, make sure that you are not outright demanding them to. Uh, you're, you're going to want to ask and possibly negotiate. Oftentimes, an offering may be in order. Uh, they're not at your beck and call. They don't exist to help us at the drop of a hat. And so showing appreciation, showing thankfulness, giving them an offering in exchange for some assistance is essentially a courteous thing to do. The other thing is, especially when we're talking about um, animal guides and spirit guides, don't take them for granted. Like other entities, they don't necessarily have to help you. Basic respect is not to take them for granted. Be grateful for their presence. Be grateful for their help. Now, what about if you choose to go to a graveyard or a cemetery? Well, there are some general rules, rules of thumb for that as well. And again, I'm going to defer you to your particular tradition or your particular culture. There are different trains of thought for that. But again, from a very general perspective, I'm going to start off again with respect. Uh, definitely respect for the dead, especially in their place of rest. In some ways, you can think of it like you are coming to their home. So you want to be respectful not only of them, but also of the grounds and the place that you are entering. The other thing is that many cultures believe that a cemetery or graveyard has a type of guardian. They come by different names depending on the tradition and depending on the culture, but nonetheless, they essentially function as, as a guardian over that cemetery. And so one of the things, if you are going to a cemetery or graveyard for the first time, is that you want to make your presence known before you even enter and ask if it's okay to come in. Give some basic offerings even before you enter the graveyard. Show respect to the gatekeeper. Now, who those people are, that varies from tradition to tradition. Uh, some say it is um, a deity, some say it's a fae, some say it's the very first person that was buried there. You know, again, regardless of who they are, you do need to recognize and realize their authority in overseeing that graveyard or cemetery. Some of the things that these guardians do is they essentially set the tone and maintain the tone of the graveyard. Um, I guess you can kind of say, you know, keeping the spirits in order, so to speak. Um, and they are aware of all the spirits and all the people who are buried there. And so if you have, if you're able to have a communication with the guardian and build some sort of rapport that guardian may assist you in gravestones and sites that may be helpful to what you're trying to accomplish. So they're definitely somebody that you want to have on your side to get on their good side. And again, just be respectful. Otherwise, you may find that the energies and the assistance you're looking for may get closed off to you because someone has felt disrespected. So the type of things that you can do for offerings is you can do flowers, you can do tobacco, tobacco smoke, you can do liquor. Many traditions, coins is also a good thing to leave as well as food even. Those offerings you'd want to do one when you enter to provide to the guardian. And if you are at any grave site that you are communing with, that you're asking questions of, that you're seeking assistance, whatever, you want to um, give them something in exchange for their time.
And probably the two most important things, especially when you are visiting a graveyard, is first of all, don't take anything that you have not asked and received permission for, or that you haven't fairly paid for or made an offering for. Also, pay attention to your intuition. Listen to your, to your gut. If you feel unwelcomed, if something doesn't feel right, don't push it. You're probably not welcome. Just move on. Thank them for their time and move on. Don't impose yourself on them. Working with ancestors and spirits can be a, a pretty amazing thing, especially the ancestors. And you're going to hear a lot more about ancestor work from Mountain Gypsy. One thing to remember is just because they're your ancestors, it doesn't necessarily mean that they're going to be willing, wanting, or able to help you or assist you. Just like in life, if they weren't very helpful or open and giving to their family members, there's a good chance that that is still going to be the case in the afterlife. So don't be shocked, don't be surprised, and don't expect. And that's why we ask. Because if they are willing and if they are able, then that's wonderful. But if they are not willing and they are not able, then we don't want to push the issue. You wouldn't want somebody to push the issue on you. So let's not do it to them. So I hope that you all were able to learn a little something from today on basic etiquette for spirit work. And if you've not done spirit work at all and you're embarking on this for the first time during this season, then definitely tune in. We have a lot more tips and pointers for you. Remember to do so safely and remember to do so courteously and with honor. If you're new to the channel, please give us a like and subscribe. And if you are interested in supporting us, if you are able to, certainly check out our Patreon. We do have a Patreon, links at the bottom. But if Patreon is not your gig or if you're not able to commit to something monthly and you feel like you still would like to give us support every now and again, we do have a Buy Your Coffee. And that link will be at the bottom as well. With that, I thank you for joining us and we will see you on the next video.